Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is just kind of turning into a sort of impromptu video here on Stuff and Things. Um, recently, we got slammed by a pretty crazy Arctic storm here. Um, I live in the Pacific Northwest, it doesn't typically snow all that much here. Right around Christmas, temperatures dropped, systems moved in, dumped a ton of snow. I don't know if you can even see this but I'm trying to dig my car out of some snow here because I'm on a mission. Around here in the Pacific Northwest, and please excuse the video quality and the audio quality, but I'm not, not bringing my fancy camera out in the weather like this. Um, we have hummingbirds, and typically hummingbirds wouldn't have been in this area, but ever since the 70s, Anna's hummingbirds have been migrating up the west coast from California, Baja area, and now they're year-round residents. And we, along with several other people in our apartment building, have hummingbird feeders that we've been putting out. We've been feeding the hummingbirds ever since we moved into this place. We've been feeding them, and we have a lot that come into our yard. And right now, with the temperatures being what they are, it's around 11 degrees right now. Wind chill is around minus 7, so that's, I think, minus 12 Celsius and then minus 22 Celsius with the wind chill. Um, all the hummingbird nectar that we put out freezes immediately, and these hummingbirds really rely on the feeders now because the only reason they've really been able to spread up the Pacific coast is because of people putting out feeders and having ornamental plants in their gardens. And in the winter especially, they rely on those feeders. So we've been taking ours in at night so it can thaw and then trying to put it out in the morning. And I wrapped it with some insulation, but still after about a couple hours, it's frozen. And all those little guys are down there trying to shove their beaks into this frozen hummingbird feeder. So I'm braving the cold and the snow and the horrible driving situation right now um, because I wanna to try to get to Lowe's and see if I can find some sort of solution for this. I know that they have like plumber's wrap, basically heated cables that you can put around pipes to keep them from freezing. So I'm hoping maybe I can find something like that. And I'm just warming my car up, trying to thaw it out. And then we'll see if I can even get out of here. Let me flip the camera around. The snow is rather deep in front of my car. I'm gonna try to clear some of this away and hopefully I'll be able to get over to the lows. Uh, we'll see what happens. All right, it's a rescue mission, gang. Not sure how this is gonna go. Hopefully I'm not gonna be the one who ends up having to be rescued here. We're really socked in with the snow here. My car is great in the snow, but it doesn't have a lot of ground clearance, so we're gonna see what happens. Here we go. We're moving. Oh boy. All wheel drive. A little 2009 Volkswagen Rabbit. Look at that. for this. I can hear my wheels scraping against my wheel arches because there's so much ice built up in there. Um, but we're making it, I think. We're going okay. It's very slick. It's very crazy, but this is all-wheel drive. It has traction control. Um, just bought brand new all-weather all tires that I put on this thing. I could probably do with some chains, but fingers crossed we're gonna get there. right now. 
I doubt it's coming through on the video, but I'm just fishtailing all over the place. I will save you. You will eat today. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if we can find something to help these little guys. I think I want to head for plumbing. Hopefully we'll find what we need there. Okay, so Lowe's was a bust, as I should have known they would have been, and they were the only hardware store open because it was a Sunday when I tried to go in there. And so now it is the next day. It is even colder. It is seven degrees right now with a wind chill of minus 10. And uh, I'm going to try to go see what we can do here. I brought the feeder in last night to try to thaw it out, and I put it out this morning. And the poor little guy is... There were several of them perched around on the branches near where the feeder was, and they were all puffed up, looked miserable. I put it out there and they were able to get a little bit of food. Now I'm going to try to get out of here and go to a local hardware store, which will hopefully have what we need. Fingers crossed. I should have known that hardware sales would have what I wanted and I would have gone there if they had been open yesterday, but they have this, this easy heat freeze free pipe system or heating system where it's a little receiver that you plug in and then it also has an end seal. And then you get some of this cable. I just got six feet because that should be all I really need. And you insert this into this receiver, easy heat freeze free, is that showing up? And then you insert one end of this in, you put the end cap on the end, you plug this in, and that will be having or providing constant heat. You can get a little another little attachment that has a thermostat on it, but I think this is gonna be enough for what we need. So cool. Just gotta get home and get this installed. Okay, so here's the feeder. I had it wrapped in a little bit of bubble wrap to try to insulate it a little bit. It's already kind of frozen, so I'm trying to thaw it out. We have got the Easy Heat Freeze Free Pipe Heating System, the cable here. So basically I'm just taking some of the braid off the end of the cable. I'm gonna tape that down. That gets inserted into this end cap. And then I will insert the other end into this. I'll take those screws off. And then I will try to wrap it around. I only got six feet, I hope that's enough because I wanna try to wrap it around the bottom a little bit too to keep the actual access points from freezing. And uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, I've got it all assembled and I just plugged it in to see if it is warming up. And it is. It is warm to the touch. <laughs> so that's actually working. And now I'm just mixing up a little bit of sugar water, one cup of sugar to four cups of water. We're almost ready. All right. Well, it is an absolute mess, but I think it's gonna work. I've got everything wrapped up. I tried to get some of the cable around the base, so hopefully that won't freeze. We shall see. Like I said, it's only about seven degrees outside right now. Um, this is just temporary while we have this cold snap going. I can already feel that the cable is warm and I have completely filled this feeder. So hopefully we'll get our first customers here pretty soon. I have been in the kitchen looking out, looking at this feeder, desperately hoping that the hummingbirds would come because um, usually they're just right on the feeder as soon as I put it out. So I was worried that maybe because there's so much nonsense going on, there's the insulating tape and the cable and everything that maybe they'll be put off. I finally saw a couple males land on it, so now I'm waiting out here so I can get a little bit of footage. I want to see that they're actually able to drink out of it and they're not put off completely by how weird it looks. I do also know that there are a couple 
Um, there's I found one battery operated and one plug-in heated hummingbird feeder. I think the plug-in one just had an incandescent bulb in the bottom, but it was gonna take over a week for them to get here and I needed a solution right away. So I'm still fingers crossed. I can't really cross my fingers in my gloves. Still finger cl fingers crossed that this is gonna work. It's not freezing yet anyway. Another one came and tried to drink out of it, and then the one that was sitting up on the branch chased it away. So it seems that that one is trying to guard the feeder, but at least it looks as though they know there is food there. The food will keep flowing because it is not going to freeze because it is now heated. Oh, here we go. We have a customer. <laughs> of course, he's on the other side of the feeder. But there is a hummingbird drinking. I'm going to approach slowly. Oh, there it goes. How was that? You chased away your competitor. Hopefully you will share because this might be the only unfrozen feeder anywhere near here at the moment. But now I think I can safely say that they have a good source of food and that they're gonna be okay. My little friend is up there behind me somewhere. Um, that's nice. We were pretty worried about these little hummingbirds. We started feeding them, so it's kind of our responsibility to keep feeding them. They're expecting this food here and they're hanging around in this area because we have this feeder here. And like I said, some of our neighbors had feeders as well, but theirs are all frozen. And now this is the only one that is without ice. So I'd say job well done. Um, it doesn't look great, but they seem to be okay and they're drinking. And that's all that really matters. So I hope you enjoyed this little uh, excursion into animal husbandry, I guess. And until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. I am freezing and I need to get inside. Of course, our heat is off now. We have the heating guy coming, but it's, it's really cold in our apartment at the moment. It's still about seven degrees outside. So anyway, see you later, guys.